What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to find the greatest common factor of algebraic expressions. And if you need a quick review on factoring or the factor tree or anything like that, any of those methods, I'll link that in the card above. But if you're good, we're just going to move on. Okay, so let's find the greatest common factor of 6x and 8x. Now this isn't too bad. All you do is multiply everything out. Okay, so for example, let's start with 6x. So which two prime numbers can we multiply together to get 6? Well, we could multiply 2 times 3, right? 2 times 3 is equal to 6, and 2 and 3 are both prime, okay? And then this x right here, it's just a single x by itself, right? So we'll just multiply that right there also. All right, so now let's go to this 8x right here. Now, what two numbers can we multiply together to get 8? Well, we could multiply 2 times 4 to get 8, right? And again, we still have, we're multiplying by this x right here, right? So times x. Now, 2 is a prime number, right? But 4 is not a prime number, right? We can keep breaking this down. So 4, we can break down into 2 times 2, okay? And now, 2 and 2 are prime numbers, right? So this 4, I'm going to replace by this 2 times 2. So I'm going to write it over here. So we're going to have 2 times, and then this 2 times 2 part, 2 times 2, and then times x right here times x. Okay, so those are equal to each other. And then this one, I'm just gonna write it one more time over here to match them up. So two times three times x. Okay, so six x, we broke down into two times three times x. And eight x, right here, we broke down into two times two times two times x, okay? Now, in order to find the greatest common factor, all you have to do is circle the factors that they have in common, okay? So we have a single two up here, and we have a single two right there. And then there's a three up here, but there's no threes down here, right? But we do have an x right here, and we also have an x right there. Okay, so since we have a two and an x up here, and we also have a two and an x down here, that means they both have a two times x in common, right? So then your greatest common factor would just be that, two x okay that would be your answer okay so now let's just try a couple more examples here so let's go to this one next so here we're going to find the greatest common factor between 14y cubed 8y squared and 10y okay so let's start with this term right here 14y cubed so first of all the number part right the coefficient 14 how can we break that down well two numbers we can multiply together to get 14 would be 2 times 7 right and both of these are prime, right? So there's nothing left to break down. Now, y cubed, right here, that's the same thing as y times y times y. Okay, whatever exponent you have up here, so three in this case, that's how many times you're gonna have that variable. So three y's right here, right? Okay, so we're done with 14 y cubed. Now let's move on to eight y squared. So again, two numbers we can multiply together to get eight would be two times four, right? like we did over here, two times four. But remember, this four you could break down again to two times two. So eight, you can break down into two times two times two, right? So two times two times two. Okay, and then we have a y squared right here, so that would be y times y, right? So y times y. Okay, so we're done with that one. And then lastly, we have 10y, right? Now the number 10, we can break down into two times five, right? So two times five. And then we just have a single y term right here, so we'll just multiply by a single y. Okay, so we multiplied all these out. So again, the last thing we have to do is now circle all the numbers and variables that they have in common. Okay, so starting right here, let's see, we have a two up here, we have a two right there, and we have a two right there. Okay, so they all have a two in common. Uh, now this one has a seven up here, uh, but this one doesn't have a 7, and neither does this one, okay? Right here we have a y, and let's see, we have a y right there, and we have a y right here. Okay, and then this one on top, we have another y right here. This one also has another y, uh, but this one down here doesn't have another y, right? So they don't have a second y in common, okay? And then lastly, the last number we have to check is this five. So there's a five down here, but neither one of these other ones up here have a five, right? So it looks like the only thing they have in common is a single two and a single y, right? Single two, single y, single two, single y. Okay, so all of these 
have a 2 and a y in common, and that's it, okay? So that would be your answer. All right, now let's try this last one right here. So we're going to find the greatest common factor between 25 a to the fourth b cubed and 10 a b squared. Okay, so again, first thing you do is multiply these out. Okay, so first let's break down this term right here. Okay, so starting with the number 25. What two numbers can we multiply together to get 25? Well, we can multiply 5 times 5, right? And also both of these are prime, so there's nothing left to break down. Okay, so we're done there. So now moving on to the variable right here, a to the fourth. So again, this exponent right here tells you how many a's you're gonna have. Okay, so we're gonna have four a's right here. So one, two, three, four. Okay, four a's. And then here we have b cubed. So this one has a three, right? So we're gonna have three b's. So one, two, three. Okay, so now we're done with this term. Now let's go to the next one, to the other one. So 10ab squared. So again, starting with the number right here, what two numbers can we multiply together to get 10? Well, two times five, right? And also two and five, again, are prime, so there's nothing left to break down there. Okay, so done with the number. Now we have just a single a right here, right? This is basically a to the first power. So just one a right there. And then we have a b squared, so this two tells us we're gonna have two b's, right? So times b times b, right, two b's. Okay, so we multiplied everything out. So again, last thing we have to do is circle whatever they have in common. Okay, so starting up here. So we can see we have a five in common, right? We also have an a up here, an a down here. Uh, let's see, we have two b's down here and we happen to have at least two b's up here, okay? And then we also have a two down here, but it doesn't look like there's any twos up here, right? Okay, so it looks like we circled everything that they have in common. So they both have a five and an a, right? So just one five and just one a, and then they both have two b's, right? So that would be b squared. Okay, right, b times b is the same thing as b squared. Okay, so then this would be your greatest common factor, 5a b squared. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful, so definitely check those out, and I'll see you there.